Now, Sunday was a love fest. A lot going on. Like, I don't know if you guys know this, but there's literally a floating island of garbage in the middle of the ocean right now. Yeah. I think it's called Puerto Rico. But a comedy show and a closing message political rally are very different. And you want to do no harm with eight days left to go. And it's very clear that harm was done. And you know that because Republicans came out right away flipping out about this. And you're choosing to talk about a joke. No, this is what I will say. You are better than that. No. Every show I say, I don't want to hear about Hitler unless we're talking about Hitler. This was not about 1930s Germany. But you did have Stephen Miller stand up there and say, America is for Americans only. America first or last? It's not about first or last. (laughs) It's about sending a xenophobic message Uh, out to the world. I mean, can you believe people are calling Trump a fascist? I mean, sure. He called Americans who don't align with him the enemy within that should be subject to military prosecution. Sure, he's praised every authoritarian leader under the sun. Sure, said he wanted to be a dictator on day one. Sure, he just threatened to criminally prosecute political rivals. Sure, threatened to pull TV licensing from CBS if he wins re-election. Sure, he refused a peaceful transfer of power, the only president in history to do so. And sure, his closest aides and appointees who he selected are all on record documenting his admiration for Hitler and wish that more of his people be like German generals. But does that qualify as fascism? They aren't using this because they're not getting it from a direct source that worked with him. So they're getting this from Mark Milley and from John Kelly, who gave on the record interviews. You can hear it in John Kelly's own voice talking about it. And the central premise of this and of so many things when it comes to Donald Trump is that we should just not take his words seriously. That Kamala's words matter and what Donald Trump says doesn't. Because guess what? Donald Trump calls Kamala a fascist quite regularly. He did it last month a couple times. Aaron, I would just say, if you are upset that you're being called an authoritarian, go and take a look at his Truth Social post from right before the show started this cease and desist letter that he has about prosecuting people he suspects of cheating. And this extends to lawyers, political operatives, donors, illegal voters. Oh, lawfare. Uh, so why Sounds didn't they like indict they him? To former Trump chief of staff, John Kelly told the New York Times that Trump fits the definition of a fascist. 13 former Trump White House officials signed an open letter backing up the former Marine Corps general. But if you were to tune in to Fox News, for instance, in, in the wake of this devastating news that joins the endless list of things that should be disqualifying, but somehow here we are, you'd see next level sane washing from things like Trump was likely just frustrated. At the same time, Trump may have just been letting off steam about the loyalty he wanted from his generals compared to what he thought about Hitler's generals. And I think that it's obviously not something that was uh, made for public consumption. I think if these things were said, it was not an effort uh, to say anything publicly about that. But his accusations are not going to move 10 votes. So, well, he ran his company like a dictator. So there you go. But the bottom line is, if you read H.R. McMaster's book, who is critical of President uh, Trump in some of it and not in others, he talks about how Madison Kelly didn't like the president. And they didn't think he deserved the job or they didn't think he was worthy of the job. And they went out of his way to make sure a lot of the things they asked him to do that they didn't like never got done. McMaster would be frustrated because he couldn't get their attention. And he would say, it's not your job to reign in the president. It's your job to do what the president wants. And then you factor in the fact that he runs his own company coming from the business world, the first one we've ever had. It's not even a public company. And then he obviously has frustration. And I could absolutely see him going out. You know what? It would be great to have German generals that actually do what we ask them to do, knowing that's a th- uh, maybe not fully un- uh, fully being cognizant of the third rail of German generals who are Nazis and whatever. However, if you are able to stomach that, you might have witnessed this epic rebuttal from Jessica Talov as she stunned her MAGA-loving co-hosts into silence by pointing out, yeah, if it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, don't be upset when it's called a fascist. Or are they just throwing it up against the wall since everything else is not working for them? No, there there is data that people don't have faith in the Supreme Court, which right now is an arm of the no, Republican I mean, on the, on the fascism part. Oh, like oh, one hundred percent. That's what's resonating with right leaning independents and with Republican voters that are open to voting for her. That Haley block, the Liz Cheney block, but they aren't using this because they're not getting it from a direct source that worked with him. So they're getting this from Mark Milley and from John Kelly, who gave on the record interviews. You can hear it in John Kelly's own voice 
talking about it. And the central premise of this and of so many things when it comes to Donald Trump is that we should just not take his words seriously. That Kamala's words matter and what Donald Trump says doesn't. Because guess what? Donald Trump calls Kamala a fascist quite regularly. He did it last month a couple times. He did it in August. Jake Tapper, just in the last hour, was playing audio of it. And so not only does he call her a fascist, he also calls her a communist. And last time I checked, communists were pretty bad. Mao, Stalin, they're responsible for over 100 million people's deaths. George Bush commemorated the lives lost to communism in 2007, I believe that it was. So spare me, as usual. I don't want to use his name in those contexts, but to say that this is something that they are inventing versus that they're getting it from the people who worked for him is absolutely not fair. And I would just say, if you are upset that you're being called an authoritarian, go and take a look at his Truth Social post from right before the show started this cease and desist letter that he has about prosecuting people he suspects of cheating. And this extends to lawyers, political operatives, donors, illegal voters. Oh, lawfare. So why Sounds didn't like they indict Hillary him. Clinton when he had the goods on her? Because there was nothing on her. Are you kidding? I am not kidding. Oh, she didn't have any classified documents? Are you she kidding? Did, Are you she only used her again? laptop and her phone. She did. Where did she keep the classified why documents in the Comey emails? Why James a Republican, Okay, by and the already way. he's talking about Hunter Biden. Donald That's Trump is trying to make and sure... If he loses. Donald Trump is trying to make sure that he heals the country. So don't make it sound heals like... Heals yeah. yeah. Um, so it's a, a much of the this comes in the wake of Kamala Harris holding a town hall on CNN, the same one that Trump ran from, to double down on her message recently that yes, Trump is an existential threat to this country. You've quoted General Milley calling Donald Trump a, a fascist. You yourself have not used that word to describe him. Let me ask you tonight: Do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. And not to just take her word for it, but the words of those closest to him who are all putting their political affiliation aside to warn us of what could occur if he's to get back in office. He would, uh, he commented more than once that, you know, that Hitler did some good things too. And of course, <laughs> if you know history, um, again, I think he's lacking in that. But if you know what his, you know, Hitler was all about, uh, it'd be, it'd be pretty hard to make an argument that he did anything good. So what would you, what would you say when he said to you that Hitler did a lot of good things? Well, I tell him that. I said, you know, sir, if you, first of all, you should never say that. <laughs> but if you knew what history, Hitler was all about from the beginning to the end, uh, everything he did was in support of his racist, fascist, uh, life, you know, the, you know, Philosophy. I'll go further than that, George. The most damning critiques of Donald Trump and the most dire warnings about what it would mean if he came back into the White House came from people who served him closest in his administration in the most sensitive and important positions. Let me just go through a few of them. I've, I've written them down so that I don't leave any out, but I'm going to leave some out because there are a lot. Obviously, there's his former vice president. There's Rex Tillerson, who was his secretary of state. Bill Barr, who was attorney general. John Kelly, Mark Milley, Mark Esper, who was his defense secretary. Jim Mattis, who was his earlier defense secretary. Dan Coats, who was in charge of the uh, national intelligence. All of these people have come out to issue dire warnings about Donald Trump. And George, I have to say, it's not just the people that have come out publicly. A lot of others, and you can see them in that they are not endorsing Trump, but they're not speaking publicly. They're worried about the feedback. Let me just read you something that an anonymous, very top official who spent every day time with Donald Trump, served more than a year in his administration, told me uh, about Donald Trump. Trump lacks any shred of human decency, humility, or caring. He is a traitor and a malignancy in our nation and represents a clear and present danger to our democracy and rule of law. Again, that is somebody who, just like John Kelly, who was with Trump every day for more than a year in the White House. Traitor. Let's put that graphic back up there because I, I, I want to make a point here. When you see that graphic of all the people who surrounded Donald Trump, these are the people that were in the Situation Room during the times of crisis. If Donald Trump is election again, none of those people will be there. Well, I've, I've spoken to Trump many times about some of these people that have crossed him. And I asked him what his next administration would be like. What he's told me is he didn't know anybody. He had to rely on advice to hire people last time. Now he knows people. He will put people in who are loyal to him. 
uh, he will put people in that will carry out his orders. The guardrails will be gone. They're literally sounding the alarm, but still people want to have conversations about whether Kamala Harris really sealed the deal on a CNN town hall. Yes, I'm talking to you, Dana Pash. Hopefully there are those on hand to remind people these two campaigns are not in the same universe. Well, I'll just tell you what I'm hearing from people who I've been talking to, uh, and that is that uh, if her goal was to close the deal, they're not sure she did that. And, you know, some people have asked, is she being held to a different standard? Maybe, but that's maybe the world that she's living in. And, you know, it strikes me what's interesting about the moment we're in right now is that we in the media are treating Vice President Harris like we treat a normal politician and we're critiquing her answers and we're talking about, well, she could have said this differently, she could have said that differently. Meanwhile, the Republican nominee literally is talking about mm -hmm. liberals being the enemy within, talking about using the, pen, using the military to go after these people. His defenders say, oh no, he's talking about uh, going after illegal immigrants or he's going after you know, mobs in the street and Trump will say, no, no, no. I mean, going after the <laughs> Pelosi's, going after Adam Schiff, going after Democrats. Um, and th these campaigns are in two u different universes. Yep. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.